Day 34, overcoming objections before they even begin or pre-selling for network marketing. This is the 365 Days of Multi-Level Marketing Journey to Freedom Podcast with Rome Bachelor, where Rome shares his daily journey from down and out to total financial freedom in one year, along with pro tips, tricks, strategies, and tools to help you join in on the journey. Now, here's Rome with today's Journey to Financial Freedom Podcast. So yesterday we were talking about overcoming objections and even some great stuff on follow-up. But today we're going to talk about eliminating objections before they even get stated. Eliminating objections before you even begin a presentation. So this can be applied to any presentation. It's not necessarily when you're prospecting. This is when you have set an appointment and cleared off a block of time to share a business or an idea or a product. Uh, where people, again, people make business decisions not on their feet, but on their seat. People make business decisions on their seat, not on their feet. Block off time where people can sit down and clear the space of time and focus in on some form of presentation. It could be a webinar, it could be a conference call, it could be a face-to-face -face sit down with a flip chart, this could be a live hotel meeting, this could be you know, you on the phone with them as you email them or Facebook them a link to a present a brief presentation video and you're on the phone while they watch so that you can chat right before and right after that's a presentation without you having to be the presenter so you don't have to sell in that way you just have to invite people to look but do it in a way that professionalizes it and highlights its importance by blocking off uh, an appointment which will tenfold your result versus just mailing something with permission. So again, the mirror neurons episode, you might go back and see why we do it that way. Um, so how do you overcome objections before you begin? How do you overcome them without ever having to deal with them in the first place? It's called pre-selling. There's a book called Pre-Selling for Network Marketing, Keith Schreider, Tom Schreider, Big Al wrote that book. It's highly recommended. It doesn't include uh, everything on the topic, but it'll get you thinking of more ways that you can apply the principle of the technique or the pro tip we're going to share in a moment uh, in, in, other, in, uh, in other ways, other, other ways to apply it other than the one we're sharing today. The one I'm sharing today I learned from Art Jonak, and Art shared this with me well over a decade ago, probably close to two decades ago, and it has been very impactful in my presentations. I have from time to time changed workspace and forgotten to use it and every time I do it's at my own peril. My job becomes much more difficult and less effective and when I apply it everything becomes so much more simple, easy, smooth and my results skyrocket from my presentations. This is a big one and it's simple and easy to apply. I want you to grab a piece of paper and a pen if you can, right now, find one, find something to write on and type in the acronym WWY, WWY. I, in fact, when I first learned this, I, we used to do at that point in time a face-to-face -face flip chart presentation and I would write it at the top of the page, WWY, under my laminate that I would use, one page presentation or at the top of my first page. and that was not for them that was for me to remind me that before i begin i want to ask wwi which stands for why would you why would you so here's here's how it applies here's what it is you get them to overcome their most likely objections before you begin sometimes you don't know what they are the more you have uh, have built a connection the more of a relationship you have the better and more accurately you can apply it but you can take a guess and it's still typically will be close because we know what the top objections are. We know it's lack of time. We know they don't like to sell. We know they don't like rejection. We know they don't want to invest much money. We know that their spouse may not support 
you can take a guess at what the most common objections are. Usually it's an investment of time and money uh, or not wanting to, to take on another burden in their life, right? They, people want to have fun. So what you do is you simply give them their objections before they state it. You bring out their objection. Here's how that works. Jim, I'm just curious, before the webinar begins, I was just wondering, why in the world would you even take a look at something? I know you have a career, I know you're a busy professional, or I know you have two jobs and you're involved in church and you have civic responsibilities, you have a family, you have children. I'm curious, why in the world would you even look at something else that's gonna require uh, some additional time made in, in your schedule. You're gonna have to find some way to cut something out or make some time to invest a few hours a week to get something started. Or why in the world would you get involved in something when you have so many demands on your time already? Why in the world would you even look at something else? I'm just curious. Or why in the world when you don't know, you know, for sure how this is gonna go or what it is 100% yet, I'm just curious, why in the world would you even look at something that you're going to have to invest a, 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 a few hours a week to get started and maybe a, a little bit of cash up front, a little bit of income, uh, m money up front to get started? Why in the world would you even look at something else? I'm just curious. So it's, I'm curious, you come up with your best guess of their top one or two or even three objections and you let them tell you why they would even look because that's a, a small commitment. You're not saying why they would join. Why they would look is a better way of wording it. I'm just curious, why would you even look at something else? Why would you even agree to look at something else? Most of the time, I'd say definitely over 80% of the time, they are going to say to you, well, it's because we always have to keep our eyes open and be open-minded. Or, well, it's because I can't keep doing things the way I'm doing them forever and I'm looking for the solution well because I don't know if my job is going to be here in two years and I'm looking for a way out well because the bills are getting steep and I've got to do something to make some extra money well because those civic duties my extra church responsibilities are, are not keeping me from going in foreclosure and I'm close and I've got to do something and, and they may admit it, they may not, but you're, what you're doing is you're letting them overcome their own objections or their most common objections before they even see the presentation. And when they tell you why they would look, even if your objection guess is not exactly their, their main objection, you're getting them to put importance on being open-minded, importance on looking for a solution. You're getting them to state their area of dissatisfaction in their life as to why they would be willing to even look. And when they state it, resistance is completely gone. When you state it, resistance may or may not be there to some degree. And it may even be high if you come off wrong. But if they, people do not reject their own thoughts, they do not reject their own words, and if they, they may be thinking in the back of their mind, but when they state it, it becomes very real for them. The experience becomes very tangible when you get them to state it instead of you stating it. It may be obvious, but if they haven't really thought about it much and they haven't said it, it's, it's sort of shaky in their mind. It's not real yet. But if you can get them to state it, they own it, they believe it, because they don't reject their own thoughts and their own opinions. And when they say it, that's when it's solidified in their mind. That is the ideal situation to then present with minimal or zero objections, because now they have been pre-sold by their own words, not yours. See, what the, the key to this thing is definitely keep resistance down and not be salesy, but the best way to do that often is to be really good at creating the environment in which people can sell themselves. I'll say that again. Become really good at asking the right questions that create the environment in which people will sell themselves. Now you don't have to sell, but you're good at letting helping people sell themselves. That is the best 
scenario of all. So WWI, I'm curious. It's a softener by saying, I'm wondering, I'm curious. Jim, I'm curious. Sally, Sue, Danielle, I'm just curious. Why in the world would you even look at something when you have so much going on in your life and so many reasons not to? I'm just find myself wondering. And let them talk. And then don't harp on it. Listen and be agreeable and lightly, very lightly highlight it by saying that makes sense. That makes sense. What you said it sounds, sounds right to me. Sounds logical to me. It didn't say that's right. You say it sounds right to me. It sounds logical. It seems right. It feels right. It makes sense to me. And then what you're doing is you're just lightly validating their thought, but you never want to make it more your thought than theirs. Be lighter than the way they state it. Just validate it so that way it's still their thought. And then you can set up, well, here's what I wanted to chat with you about today. Here's what I wanted to show you. It may not be a fit for you. That's a takeaway. It may or may not be a fit for you. You know, I don't know if this is a fit for you. I don't know if I'm barking up the wrong tree. You know, you may or may not be interested. But I think this is incredible. And I want to share it with you and get your thoughts. And then here's what we're doing. So that could be sending the link to the video at that moment. Not before you ask but ask and then send the link and then be there at the end you ask you know a good question is there anything else you need to know before we get started or does that make sense to you or you know whatever your closing question is on a scale from 1 to 10 I'm just curious how do you see yourself uh, becoming involved whatever your good closing question is that's when you use it at the end but you need to do the pre-selling question first so that they overcome their own objections before you even begin and it will weigh heavy that they look at this as a solution versus reject it before they even take a look with that this is day 34 your freedom of your journey to freedom podcast and i want to thank you sincerely for joining me in the journey and sharing this with your friends Feel free to reach out and make sure you go get your prospecting cheat sheet to help you in your prospecting processes at prospectingcheatsheet.com. That's prospectingcheatsheet.com. Absolutely free. Thank you for listening. This is Rome Bachelor. Until our next episode, this was day 34. Thank you for sharing today's 365 Days of MLM to Freedom podcast. And remember to email your questions and comments directly to Rome at 365 Days of MLM at gmail.com. And until next time, we want to encourage you to join in on the journey.